Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today, we're gonna to talk power supplies. This is the QJE PS30 SWI. So QJE is the brand, QJ is the beginning of the model number PS for power supply, 30 for 30 amps, and SWI for switching. These guys have got it going on when it comes to naming. Let's go plug it in, turn it on, and see what it's all about. This video is not about the dynamic duo here, it's about the trifecta, all three of these things. And what I wanna talk about specifically today is this power supply. If you are new to ham radio, there are a lot of power supply options out there. And you might even think like I did mistakenly way back when I first got started that one of these little bricks would do you just fine. I mean, it outputs 12 volts, right? Right? Yeah? No? Okay. The reason why this isn't going to work, I have an amplifier here and I've got a whole bunch of other accessories I like to run on my desk. I like to have a power meter and some other stuff going on. Maybe two radios, one to listen, one to transmit on. You need more power. So this is a 30 watt switching power supply. And because it's a switching power supply, it's physically tiny. The Astron that I had before this was the size of this brick here. So I had two of these bricks next to each other. That was a, a pretty big boy. Just to give you kind of a baseline, I'm putting out CW at, let me turn the amplifier off. 14, 125, and let's do a full 10 watts output. And over here, we've got an amp meter and a volt meter. And right now we're pulling zero amps because we're doing hardly anything besides showing the two displays, well, and the light and the power supply. But if we watch this, it goes up to, I don't know, two and a half, three amps of current draw, which is about right for what this radio should be doing. So no problems there. Now, if we turn this back down to five, and we've got the amplifier keying cable in, we put the amplifier in line, we're gonna to go to 100 watts. Take a look at that amp meter now. So we're pushing 15 amps out of this thing, 13 to 15 amps. It's an analog meter. You kinda of, you kind of gotta do what analog meters do. That's one of the reasons why you might need something big like this. Also, voltage, it has a special spot on it for 13.8. We're probably at 13.7. Let's see what the, well the, Amplifier says 13.7 down there, so we are good to go on that end. Let's do that same test again with the voltmeter on there. She doesn't even move, it's rock steady, no problem. To get a switching power supply with an amp meter and a voltmeter on it, like this has, it's gonna be a pretty penny from Astron. Astron has one $219. This one here happens to be $97.99. So $98 versus $220. Yeah, this is a good way to get yourself started. A couple of things that you have to know about switching power supplies is sometimes they put out noise. So this has a noise offset feature which can move where that noise shows up. I have no way of demonstrating that noise because I guess I got lucky and I got one that doesn't have a noise problem. This is a fantastic way to get yourself started. It has a aux jack on the front or a cigarette lighter plug as we used to call them when I was a kid. And then on the back, it has a set of binding posts. Let's get it over on the bench and take a look and see what it's actually made of. The back side that I haven't shown you yet shows you the binding post output adapter. It has a cooling fan built in and then it takes a regular uh, PC power supply cable and there's a fuse baked into the bottom here. Let's take a look real quick at the ground on this and put this thing into continuity mode so we can hear it beep when it has continuity and I'm going to plug this in to the ground there and the ground on the power supply connection there and you can hear it beep which means this thing has a good ground. Sometimes these things have floating grounds, which means the ground isn't actually connected to anything except for your other equipment. And as a ham, you can fix that. All right, so when I was a brand new tech and did get my first radio, it was a Yezu dual bander. I did use one of these guys and it, it powered up, but didn't really transmit all that well because this thing couldn't put out enough power to keep up with the two meter mobile's 50 watt output input power requirement to get 50 watts out. So I quickly learned that this was not the right way to go for power supplies and you need something like this. I have had a bunch of the big brick Astrons for a while and then I got this when I got a bunch of other equipment from another ham and this thing has been working really, really well for me. Uh, the only the only complaint I have, if you have to complain about one, is the fan puts out a little bit of noise. But when you get into, you know, working a contest or something, you don't even notice it. And it did come in handy once. I used this power supply on my Kilo in a weekend. So a thousand contacts in a weekend on this power supply and it handled it like a champ. And that little fan, I actually kind of cheated and used it to blow cool air over my radio to keep my radio cooled down while my radio was running hotter than it normally runs. Radio wasn't complaining yet, but I was starting to be, I was starting to have a little bit of mechanical empathy as I like to call it. There is a link in the description down below for this guy here where you can get it off of Amazon. I recommend this as a good starter power supply and then 
you will know when you outgrow it because all of a sudden your equipment will just turn off in the middle of working because you're pulling too much power out of, out of this. 30 amps is gonna be hard to exceed the power level on though. This also has some protection circuitry in it that has saved my bacon. I was working with an amp that another friend of mine sent in and the MOSFETs, the final output transistors in the amplifier blew and created a dead short, which hooked positive to negative and all of my gear was saved because this thing turned off right away. And it took me a minute to realize what it was because I didn't even know it had that feature, but it does. So it's a good thing to have. I have run some Astrons. They work fantastically as well. They're just big. And where this thing has a fan noise that comes out of it, the Astron has a vibration, like a metal hum that gets created when it runs. So you can't get away from it no matter what. Might as well save yourself some size and some weight and some desk space and so on. Good to go on this thing. There is a video right up here I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. We'll see you in the next one.